Xiaomi has probably gone down to their last phone of the year. And this one is the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G China Room Edition. And yes, everybody in China is asking, where is our Redmi Note 9 and Note 9 Pro? Finally, it's here. Please do not confuse this with the global edition of the Redmi Note 9 series. And it's quite a different product on its own. So right now, let us unbox the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G China Edition. So hi everybody, I'm Mitch002 and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the latest and probably the last phone of the year before we end 2020. And I have here in my hand the pro version of the Redmi Note 9 series in China. So it is dubbed as the Mi 10T Lite in China. Xiaomi has been a bit confusing lately with the release of their phone. So this one being the Mi 10T Lite, the Redmi Note 9 4G being the Poco M3, and the Redmi Note 9 5G is a bit unknown. And rumor said that it's the Redmi Note 10 5G in the global version pretty soon and another disclaimer it's just a rumor i'm not sure if it's true or it's not true i just tell you what i know right now so without further ado let's unbox this one so the redmi note 9 pro 5g has a pretty white box and they said that this is the cheapest 108 mp camera right now so upon opening the box you have the Redmi logo here and I'm still wondering if this is the K-series logo or it's the Redmi logo permanently. Well, Xiaomi has the Xiaomi bunny and probably Redmi has this dragon. Makes sense. Now upon opening the sleeve, we have the SIM ejector tool. We have the user guide over here. We have the frosted jelly case. And well, there's no indicator that this is an antibacterial or not. Maybe not. Now we have the phone right here in front of you and me. It's the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G. And this color is the rose gold beach. Pretty similar to that of the Mi 10T Lite 5G that I have unboxed a couple of weeks ago here in my channel. And it's exactly the same thing. Well, except the camera. What's nice about this one is they finally released it in China. Probably everybody's waiting for it and the Mi 10 T Lite didn't get debut here in Southeast Asia, only on the European countries and everybody's scramming to buy this color. I swear this color is probably the best color that has been released this year so far. But before that, let's check what other things are in this box. So we have the USB Type-C cable. We also have the 33 watts charger over here. So right now, let's take a quick tour around the phone. Underneath, we have the audio jack, then the USB Type-C port, the microphone in, and of course, your loudspeaker. On the side, we have the fingerprint scanner slash power button, and of course, your volume rocker. On top, we have your noise cancellation mic, and of course, your IR blaster. And on the side, we have the SIM card ejector tray, wherein we can sport a micro SD card plus a nano SIM or two nano SIM at the same time. At the back, we can see that there's four cameras over here and a LED flash. And the Redmi logo is pretty much down there. On at the front, we have your punch hole camera, which is on the upper middle of your screen. And it's a 16 MP front shooter. And that's pretty much for the phone tour. Right now, let's dig a little bit deeper on the specs of this phone. It has a Snapdragon 750G and it's a 5G capable 8 nanometer processor, which is, well, probably one of the latest chip from uh, Qualcomm. And it's also present in the Mi 10T Lite 5G. Like I told you, it's almost the same. And it's just the word almost, not exactly the same. Now, checking Antutu benchmark, it has a 345,000 points, which Almost the same as the Mi 10T Lite. Then taking a quick look at DRM info, 
we can see that this phone has a Wi-Fi level one security, which means you can watch HD on your now checking Geekbench, it has scored a 658 uh, single core points and a 2017 multi-core score, which is well pretty not bad. Now taking a quick spin at 3D Mark, it has scored a 2783 points for slingshot X3, which means this is capable of running high graphics games. Mm. Right now, let's take a quick look at the screen. It has a 6.67 IPS LCD and it's HDR10 ready, 1080p Corning Gorilla Glass 5 front and Corning Gorilla Glass 5 back. And it also has plastic frames, which makes this phone pretty, pretty nice and pretty, pretty light on the palm. Then this phone also comes in three variants. It has a 6 gig of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig of storage, which also comes in a UFS 2.2 read and write speed. And of course, how can I forget that this phone has 120 hertz of screen refresh rate, which is really, really something uh, to consider this phone. And I should say I have adjusted too much to the uh, faster screen refresh rate, and it's really very, very smooth to my eyes. Right now, let's try the fingerprint scanner. Very responsive. Okay, watching YouTube on this phone is really enjoyable. It has dual speaker, making the stereo a good surround sound to please your ears. Oh, okay guys, let's talk about the quad camera on this phone. It has a 108 MP main sensor, which has an aperture of 1.8, taking those very, very nice photos, and it's coupled with the 8 MP ultra wide lens. 2MP macro lens and 2MP depth sensor. Then it can record up to 4K 30 FPS, which is a little bit underpowered for me. I expect a little bit more out of this 108MP camera, but well, it's the best that it can offer. 4K 30 FPS and 16MP up front, which can record up to 1080p and 30 FPS. Right now, let me walk you through some of the pictures that I've taken from this camera okay uh, basically the shots outdoors are nice crisp and very very clear and we can expect that some of the shots here at night and a little bit on the low light we can see that it's a little bit grainy but i don't expect too much from this camera uh on indoor since it's a little bit underpowered for me of course uh then taking some quick look at the selfie shots. Well, we can see the selfie is definitely great, definitely very, very detailed, but of course, under low light again, it's a little bit grainy as expected. Now, taking some videos on the rear camera, let's see its quality. Well, the video from the rear camera is expectedly good and I can see that it's very, very sharp. Uh, I like the color, it's not oversaturated, but of course, it's a little bit uh, jittery. Well, recording 8K, you need a Snapdragon 865 chip plus a 108 MP camera just to do the trick. Now, taking a quick look at some videos up front. So guys, this is how it looks like when you're vlogging using the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G's front camera running at 1080p. 30 FPS. Pretty clear, not bad. This is how it looks like when you're vlogging using the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G front camera using 1080p, 30 FPS. Well, pretty bright, pretty clear, even at low light. Not bad. Okay, here I can say the front selfie camera recording at 1080p, 30 FPS is nice. Definitely nice. It's not that jittery 
as compared to the front but i can say it's very very much tolerable well if you can use a gimbal it would be better but overall i can say this could be a very basic vlogging phone right now let's play a game on this phone we're writing call of duty right now and we can set the graphics quality to very high and the frame rate to high which is well not that bad uh considering it's not a snapdragon 865 and we can run graphics like this one and playing the game is good immersive and not much uh on the frame drop side contact. and i can see that uh, the screen is giving me a nice experience uh, 120 hertz screen refresh rate and definitely I'm enjoying the game and though I can say that playing this game for a little bit over 30 minutes you can feel a little bit warm at the back of the phone now uh, probably I can suggest that you can buy a clear to pull it down faster than this one but of course it's still tolerable the heat is still tolerable and the gameplay is very, very nice. Now this phone sports a 4820 mAh of battery which can support up to 33 watts of fast charging. Xiaomi claims that it can charge in 58 minutes from 0 to 100. Well, this is what I got. It's almost the same from the Mi 10T Lite and let's check the screen on time from PC Mark Test. Here's the score. Pretty much still the same. Almost the same from the Mi 10 t Lite. Now guys, I got to almost everything covered uh, with everything you want to know on the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G and I can say that it's almost the same performance as from the Mi 10T uh, Lite 5G and well, except that it doesn't have any Google installed on this one. It's pretty easy that you can install uh, using the Google installer version 3.0 and run it on this phone. And the next thing you know, you have the Google Play. It's so simple. Now, what can I say about this phone? Together with the Mi 10T Lite 5G, this phone is a very, very underrated phone. And I hope that people can start appreciating the Snapdragon 750G 5G chipset, which is very, very nice and very, very battery efficient. And I can say that the design is really, really some breakthrough from Xiaomi, having the gradient from green down to pink. And I really love the color. It's really something that I miss for this year going to the beach. That's why I prefer this color. Well, looks nice. Overall, this phone has a good camera. It has a good processor, except that if you're playing heavy games, uh, high intense graphic games, you could have opted for the Snapdragon 865 instead of the Snapdragon 750G, which is a little bit underpowered, more battery efficient, of course. Uh, then the design, I really, really like it. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon so you don't miss any videos here from my channel. And I do hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye.